Xpeng have officially unveiled the global version of the P7 Plus. And guys, I'm glad that the previous generation model wasn't a global version because this is quite a bit better. Particularly, it looks way better, but it's got some, some nice upgrades and changes that I think make it a car that's a lot more compelling than the previous generation. Aside from the bizarre jargon with the VLA, vision, language, action, model stuff. Anyway, aside from that, this is a fantastic vehicle that is absolutely worth looking at because it's their one of their, it's going to be their global car, one of their global cars. So that means the version that's in China is the version you'll get in other countries. I think that's very important that next thing I made that decision. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. If you can click on the link in the description where it says becoming a YouTube member, that would be great because it will help me to continue bringing all of the videos that I do, which is more videos on EVs than anyone else on YouTube. So what's this new P7 Plus? Well, the EV version of the P7 Plus, there's two, there's an e-rev and an EV. The EV has two powertrain options. The entry level model has 180 kilowatt, just 241 horsepower. And it's rear wheel drive. But anyway, I'll get to the powertrain stuff later on. It's not as interesting to be honest, the powertrain. What's probably more interesting is what it costs, what it's probably going to cost overseas as well. Starting price is $26,700 US dollars. For a five meter long vehicle, it's really compelling. And I think it costs a similar amount to a BYD SEAL. And you've got to admit, this is a far superior car in a number of ways to the BYD SEAL. Now, don't get me wrong, if you own a BYD SEAL, I mean, that's great. They're really good cars for what they are, for sure. Now, apparently this car is coming to international markets, including Europe, and the E-Rev version will have 1,550 kilometers of mixed range. But, I mean, honestly, why bother when you can get more than enough range with the non-hybrid the non version? Anyhow, apparently the new P7 Plus have has 104 upgrades. That's Guys, that's a lot of upgrades, 104. The front end looks way better. The rear end looks way better. They've redesigned the whole car. Not completely. I mean, you still see a, a lot of the old car, but the new changes are fantastic. I think are a big improvement. Really, really good improvement. It's now 15 millimeters longer. It's not much difference. It's nearly 5.1 meters long though. This is a pretty long car. 5,071 millimeters. It's 1,937 millimeters wide. So six centimeters away from being two meters wide. Wheelbase is very long too, it's three meters. The P7 sits on 20 inch wheels that you can see in this photo. Guys, I went in one of these cars in China and of course, you know, you would have seen them at different car, car shows or, or in different countries around the world if you follow the EV industry a lot. The boot space in this is much bigger than you'd expect. It looks like a sedan, but it's a liftback. So I think you could fit a... a a full-size road bike in that boot space. It's it's quite large. Not standing up, of course, laying down. So what are the standout features that are different to other cars? Well, one, it has a 29-inch augmented reality heads-up display and 20 speakers. And I believe it's got upgraded leather seats, proper leather seats, which is a nice change. In addition, you can get an, the option of two or three Turing chips, meaning up to 2,250 tops of power, meaning you can equip this vehicle to be the most powerful car in the world when it comes to computing power. That's an option. And that then comes with the vision language action or VLA model that integrates visual perception, language understanding, and action generation with reasoning. Now, I know someone came up with that title and thought it sounded cool, but um, I don't know, I reckon ChatGPT created it. And for me, it doesn't doesn't mean much. I think it's um sounds... Anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> what does matter though is the car has the new AOS 6.0 cockpit, which is AIOS, the AI operating system, 6.0 cockpit that features a brand new driving light, design language, and interaction improvements with more dynamic animations. Hopefully, uh, that new uh, software system will come to other existing XPENGs as well. If you'd like to book a paid consultation, uh, you can do so, and I'll put a link in the description below. If you want advice on what electric car to buy, solar systems, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. So getting now, getting back to that power, the E-Rev, the P7 Plus, 
has a 1.5 liter turbocharged range extender engine. They're very different to a normal engine because it's just intended to charge the battery, not to power the wheels. It has a total of 110 kilowatt or 148 horsepower, and it's very, very efficient, extremely efficient, in fact. Not that you would um, want to use it because you might probably never need to. It's got a 50 kilowatt hour battery, 49.2 kilowatt hour battery, meaning it's got 430 kilometers of pure electric range. So along with the fact that it's got an 800 volt platform, it's a very fast charging battery. You can probably charge that battery in about 15 minutes. 300, I believe it's 350 kilowatt fast charging. So yeah, I mean, the e is awesome, but I think the fully electric version is the one I'd be looking at. E-Rev range though is 1,550 kilometers. Uh, single electric motor with 180 kilowatt. So combined power is approximately 290 kilowatt. It also can charge or can add 277 kilometers of range to the battery in five minutes. 277 kilometers in five minutes. That's, um, that's, that's pretty awesome. So the P7, the actual EV version, comes with two powertrain options, one rear wheel drive, 180 kilowatt, 241 horsepower. There is, in the mid-spec model, a 230 kilowatt, 308 horsepower motor in the rear. And then I believe there is also an all-wheel drive, and that hasn't been disclosed yet, but I believe there's an all-wheel drive. Battery options. The smaller battery pack is a 62 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. The bigger battery is a 75 kilowatt hour battery. Range is amazingly good considering the size of the car and the size of the batteries. The longer range version gets 725 kilometers CLTC, so about 600 kilometers of range from a 75 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. Both batteries are lithium ion phosphate. I mean, that's a lot of range, CLTC range, but still 600 kilometers of WLTP range from a 75 kilowatt hour battery. Really, really impressive range. So pricing starts at 26,700. Um, it comes standard with a basic ADAS system powered by two NVIDIA drive or in chips for 508 tops. But you can upgrade to the Ultra SE driving system for $1,700 US dollars, sort of like where you upgrade with Teslas. It has two Xpeng developed Turing AI chips for 1,500 tops of power. But if you want the ultimate full self-driving version, um, it comes with the Ultra ADAS and three Turing AI chips for 2,250 tops of power. That system costs $2,860, a lot less than Tesla full self-driving. Not saying it's as good as Tesla full self-driving, but it's pretty good. And that means though that it's by far, by far the most powerful software system in a car in the world, by far. Nothing is even close to that. And Tesla, um, they are unveiling robotaxis this year, going to have them on the roads. Xpeng say they are, they are as well. So that's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting to see how that plays out. Good race here between Xpeng and Tesla. I'm, uh, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait and eat my popcorn and watch this race play out. It's going to be fun to see, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery, or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below, and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description, and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.